Good afternoon. My name is Gerald Martinez. I am the Human Resource Manager for Arista LLC here in Los Angeles, California. In today's presentation, I will discuss California wage and hour laws. Currently, wage and hour class actions are a major concern for employers here in California. They are costly to litigate and the potential liability can be staggering. California wage and hour violations are popular with plaintiff's lawyers not just because they are easier to maintain in California, but also because California's wage and hour laws are more generous to employees than in any other state. In today's presentation, I will give an overview of California's wage and hour laws, including defining some of the terminology used, a brief history of the laws enacted, the requirements for California employers, along with penalties employers face for violating these laws, and the common mistakes California employers make, such as inaccurate timekeeping records, meal and break violations, and overtime discrepancies, as well as avoiding pitfalls. California is recognized in the United States for its comprehensive and rigorous employee compensation regulations. The Division of Labor Standards Enforcement, or the DLSC, as we call it here in California, headed by the Labor Commissioner, is mandated by California laws to enforce the wage and hour laws. Wage and hour laws in California are outlined in the Labor Code. Industrial Welfare Commission's wage orders also forms the source of the wage and the hour laws. The wage orders are grouped according to the occupation and industry and the employers are required uh, by law to identify which industry wage orders are applicable to their business and adhere to the regulations of these orders. Wage and hour laws aim to improve the working conditions and ensure that employees are properly compensated and services are rendered. Definitions Wages are defined as amounts of the labor which is carried out by employers and it includes fixed amounts or amounts measured according to the commission's braces, time, piece and task, and any other form of calculations. Labor incorporates service, work which can be done under a contract, station plan, partnership, subcontract, or any other arrangement as long as a person's demanding payment personally performed the service. Employer is defined as a person or entity who employs another person through an appointment or a clear contract of hire. It can include municipality, state, and any of their subdivisions of the state. The employer must be a person who runs the enterprise with one or two persons. Uh, the person is not necessarily owning the enterprise, but can operate on concession spaces. Employee. Employee refers to the person of a legal age or origin offering a service for an employer in any business. The service can be exchanged for a wage or gratuity of payment. Employing is the act of contacting, uh, hiring the services of the employee. An agent, more commonly referred to as supervisor or manager, is a person of authority who is not the employer but has the ability to make hiring decisions and carry out management functions including assigning employee tasks, and issuing corrective action for poor performance. Workday is defined as the period of time in the day during which work is performed. Work week is defined as the hours or days in a calendar week, 40-hour work week, 5-day work week, and so forth. The following slide will illustrate a brief history of California wage and hour law. California wage and hour labor laws date back to 1911, when the Voluntary Workmen's Compensation Program came into existence. The form part of the first piece of legislation on workers' compensation in California, and in 1937, the Labor Code was approved by Governor Frank Meridian, Industrial Action Commission, and was mandated to ensure the safety of workers and who, those who work in hazardous environments the addition of section 6508. In addition, in 1945, section 6604 was added to the uh, provisions of workmen's safety and guard against dismal of employees who refuse to work in hazardous environments. Private Attorney General Act 2004 was enacted and has helped work workers collect, 
penalties. Wage Theft Prevention Act 2011 passed, and on January 1, 2017, California's minimum wage was raised to $10.50 per hour. Laws and Regulation Payroll records is a requirement under Labor Code 1174 for employees to keep records showing all hours worked and the names of employees. In addition, their records must include wages received by each employee. Electronic records have to be received within the state of California request of DLSC. Labor Code 226 make it compulsory for employers to accompany each paycheck with accurate itemized wage statements, commonly referred to as pay statements. Hours work. Employees have to be paid for all hours they work for an employer. Working time in California is defined to include all duration of employee is under the employee's control. Reimbursement for expenses. Labor Code 2802 requires individuals to reimburse employees any expenditures or any losses incurred in the line of duty. Under the same code, uh, an employer is required to indemnify the employee if he or she successfully defends himself or herself from a suit arising while the person is in the line of duty. Minimum wage. All employees, employers are, re are required to post the posters of both California Minimum Wage and Federal Fair Labor Standards Act. The wage orders requires employers to, to pay for uniforms, tools, and equipment and examination costs required for a particular job. Employers are required not to take away gratuities or use it to credit against the minimum wage. Deductions. Labor Code 224 permits deductions which are legal such as taxes and wage garnishments. Any other authorizes deductions. For losses and breakages resulting uh, from the employee's negligence, deductions are not legal. Gross negligence, willful misconduct, dishonesty, which causes jobs can result in deductions from an employee's pay. Overtime. For all hours work past eight hours in a day or 40 hours in a week or eight hours of the seventh consecutive day, California law requires employers to pay one and one and a half the rate of employer's pay. Working beyond 12 hours in a day or eight hours on the seventh consecutive day of the week incurs double payment or double pay of the normal rate. The re this requirement provided under Labor Code 510 alternative work schedules are permitted by law where an employee can work 10 hours per day for four days, commonly referred to as a 410 schedule. Makeup time is also permitted under Labor Code 513. Exemption from overtime. Some employees are exempted from overtime based on the level of their duties. White collar exemptions deals with employees in their professional positions, such as administrative assistant positions, executive positions. Labor Code 515 outlines various mechanisms of white collar exemptions. Other professionals are exempted from overtime in duties include computer professionals, inside sales persons, private school teachers, outside salespersons. This type of employees is referred to as an exempt level employee. Meal periods, rest periods, and recovery periods forms part of the mandatory breaks that an employer must, pay, must provide. Maximum hours. Under Labor Code 551, California employees who are classified as non-exempt are provided one rest day in seven days. The rule exempts employees who work in a profession of an emergency services, railroad common carriers, and those working less than six hours per day or 30 hours per week. Payment of wages. Equal pay means there's no discrimination based on sex. Under Labor Code 1197.5, men and women who perform jobs that are equal skill, effort, working conditions, and responsibilities should be renumerated equally. Labor Code 207 requires employees to commit to uh, frequent payment of their employees for workers for work done between 1st and the 15th of the month. Payment should be between the 6th and the 26th day of the month. Form of payment 
of wages must be convenient and attracts no discount. Payment of termination must be done according to Labor Code 213D. Under California law, final paychecks must be paid within 24 hours from the time of termination. Accrued and unused vacations are considered ma uh, mature during the termination and must be paid on the final paycheck. In our next slide, we will discuss some of the penalties associated with violating California's wage and hour laws. Violation of Labor Code 226 will attract a penalty of $50 for the initial pay period, and employees may also recover $100 for subsequent pay period. Failure to provide mandatory breaks such as meal, rest, or recovery periods will result in employees being entitled to one hour pay penalty for every single day where meal, rest, or recovery period was not given. An employer who fails to adhere to sections 201.212 and 202 on payment of wages of an employee who is discharged or quits will have to pay the same wages continually for 30 days until such payment is made or an action is commenced. Failure to pay employees according to the provisions of sections 201.3204.204b will lead to a penalty of $100 per employee, per employee unpaid in the initial violation and $200 per employee for subsequent violations uh, together with 25% of the amount that is written by the employer. If an employee is denied the chance to inspect or copy records which regards to itemized statements as provided in sections 226, the employer is liable to pay a penalty of $750. Our next slide will show the potential exposure a company with 500 employees faces for violating California's wage in hour laws. As you can see in the assumptions, California's employees headcount is 500, 500 employees. The hour each earning an hourly rate of $15 an hour and an overtime rate of $22.50. Missed meal or rest breaks, one each per week, unpaid overtime, one hour per week. This comes out to, for a headcount of 500 employees, meal period penalties of $1.5 million. Rest period penalties, $1.5 million. Unpaid overtime equates to $2.3 million. Wage statement penalties, $2 million. Waiting time penalties, $1.8 million. For a grand total of $9.2 million in penalties. As we can see in this slide, the potential penalties a company face faces for violating wage and hour laws in California can be extremely costly. Our next slide will highlight common mistakes employers in California make in regards to wage and hour violations. There exists a loophole for employees to work under unauthorized overtime and claim payment. This is an area where California wage and hour laws can disadvantage employers since suffer and permit means the employer should have the knowledge to have the knowledge about the work done by an employee whether required to do it or not. Alternative work schedules might not be flexible or smooth in all industries. In healthcare industry, some employees have different schedules that might cause complexities for employees as far as pay calculation is concerned. The accrued holiday and leave pay, whether spent or not, is always a loss for employers since use it or lose it policies are not allowed. Allowing employees to perform duties outside their employment uh, classification, exempt versus non-exempt, is also a common mistake. Our next slide will highlight some action items that an employer can take that will help mitigate exposure to a company. Avoiding pitfalls. Perform internal audit of employee classifications. Prepare accurate job descriptions to ensure that duties are correctly presented uh, and the employee is well aware. 
review employees' handbooks and policies to ensure compliance and make sure that they're not outdated or reflect the correct amount of wages to be paid. A performance, um, a perform annual performance reviews or quarterly performance reviews. And watch out for minimum wage increase. This concludes my presentation on California's wage and hour laws. Thank you and have a great day.